I have the beginnings of bronchial pneumonia, which I get like clockwork every November. I'm being made nauseated by a lot of the medication that I'm on. But I'm going to perform anyway, hoping that I get that jolt of love that so often happens when I'm on stage with the flirts. Well, you look great. Have you Thanks. lost a lot of weight? Or is I've gained some since I saw you. Yeah, tasteful. It's patty yeah, dressing. You look me. great. Uh, yeah. My brother is redundantly heterosexual. Happy to be heterosexual. Married a really wonderful woman. And claims that he had absolutely no idea that I was gay when I came out to him. He's into bondage. Really? Yeah. Which, are you a top or a bottom? <laughs> <laughs> but immediately said, well, it doesn't make, matter to me at all. I love you. You're my brother. We've gone through you know, our whole lives together. You have my unconditional support. And unlike my parents, he meant his unconditional support. Right. Well, right, go enjoy Later. the rest of the yeah. show, and I'll see you careful of my yeah. scar. <laughs> all right. Bye. 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 Good luck. Good performance. And now they're here, they're queer, the years were here, the fabulous location. Mama said on the day I was born, what your mama, mama said, she going on. It was a party next door, and people calling up for more, and they played that boogie all night long. All night long. I was raised on a beat that was so, so sweet. I had asked my parents to come to this show tonight. Boy, don't forget to dance. They decided that they were not comfortable being in the theater and being part of this documentary. Uh, they gave me a lot of excuses before we got down to the real reason, which is shame and fear. Living in a very conservative part of the country, they are legitimately afraid of what might happen to them and their house and their children and their grandchildren if they stand up in a public way and say, we think that it's OK that our son is gay. We love him anyway. The flirtations have become, for me, my chosen family. Gay people often talk about families of choice because we're often rejected by our biological families. And over the course of our lives, we put together families, people that we can count on in the ways that straight people count on their biological relatives. We never actually can leave the stage unless we sing this next song. It's a lullaby, and it's called Everything Possible. This song expressed the kinds of sentiments that I would like to think that more parents would pass along to their children. You can be anybody that you want to be. You can love whomever you will. You can travel any country where your heart leads and know I will love you still. You can live by yourself. You can gather friends around. You can choose one special one. And the only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you Some girls grow up strong and bold. Some boys are quiet and calm. Some race on ahead. Some follow behind. Some grow in their own space and time. Some women love women. And some men love men. Some raise children. And some never do. You can 
I'm pretty certain that I will never return to the Midwest again to give a concert. <laughs> Cancer now covers more than three-fourths of both lungs. Traveling and singing are getting harder and harder to do. You can love whoever you I realized that some people could look at my life and say, oh, it was so sad, and he died of AIDS, and isn't that tragic? But what I want to come through is that even after all the pain and all the torture, and even having AIDS, I can honestly say being gay is the greatest gift I was ever given. I wouldn't change it for the world. It's one special one, and the When you're gone. There are currently three different lines of evidence that suggest that a person's sexual orientation is at least partially genetically determined. The first line of evidence comes from twin studies, which show that identical twins are very likely to have the same sexual orientation. The second line of evidence comes from extended family studies, showing that quite distant relatives uh, often share the same sexual orientation. And I think that the most compelling evidence comes from studies in our own laboratory, which look directly at people's DNA, directly at the genes, and which show that people that are gay have a tendency to inherit one type of gene and people that are heterosexual another. Uh, once those genes are isolated and once these results, like any scientific results, are extended and confirmed, I think it will provide truly compelling evidence that sexual orientation is, at least in part, determined not when a person is 20 or when a person is 10 or not even when a person is one year old, but when they're conceived, because that's when we inherit our genes. I studied the brains of 41 people at autopsy looking for differences between straight and gay people. Now, of course... We know there are differences between the brains of men and women on average. There are certain parts of the brain that are bigger in men than women and certain parts that are bigger in women than men. And there's one particular part of the brain that we've been especially interested in. It's called the hypothalamus. It's actually this region here at the base of the brain. It's involved in the regulation of uh, sexual drive and other instinctive behaviors. So if there's a part of the brain that's responsible for our sexual attractions, then it should be similar between uh, most women and gay men. And that's what we find in this part of the brain where sexual feelings are generated. <laughs> 